Welcome back to another episode of I Got My Pops. It's your boy Trick Daddy Dollars, D County Mail slash player. Remember, if you're ever in town, make sure you come by Sunday's Eatery where you can get a Sunday's meal six days of the week because we close on Tuesday, okay? We close on Tuesday. We gonna get a competition a day off, okay? How about that? Today we talk about the culture. And the reason why I'm gonna talk about the culture because I see a lot of these black, Lawyers supposed to be uh, civil rights attorneys is what they call them. These dudes is always popping up when somebody tragically lose a family member, a son, daughter, sister, brother, daddy, cousin. But we don't see them playing no loss prevention. So I don't, I got between, I'm stuck between the fact that are they just jockeying for the camera time or are they really for the black folks? I want to know. Because if you're ready for the black folk, I need you to be there at all times. We need to bring back summer program. We need to bring back ass work for the little bad kids in the black community. We need to bring back mannerism. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. We need to bring back those kind of things. I was born, bred, and raised right here in Miami-Dade County. My, 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 my daddy side, it's got Alabama ties. My mama's side, it got South Carolina ties. So I'm gonna be forever from the South. And when I speak of the South, I'm talking about the real South. I'm talking about when Atlanta was full of from Atlanta. Not all from everywhere else. I'm talking about when the DMV was the Mecca of Muslim, or should I say the nation of Islam. When I knew, when I thought about the DMV, I thought about military brothers standing on the corner with their suits on, selling their bean pie with the Final Calls magazine, encouraging other black men to do something and be something positive in life. When I thought of the Chocolate City, I was also thinking about Motown, Detroit, Michigan, where the car industry came up there and made billions of dollars and, 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 and worked and slaved the shit out of black men and just abandoned them and left them for dead. When I talk, when I think about the South, I think about real stuff. Miami was well, the first Harlem in my eyes by me looking through the history books. When if you was an actor, an athlete, or anybody in politics, anything, if you had any main, main, main movement, you had to come to historically black Overtown. Now let me talk about my city, speaking of Overtown. Miami-Dade County used to be Dade, Brown, and Palm Beach for y'all who don't know. They split it up. I think for culture differences and money reasons, but they split it up. And you wonder why Martin King Parade is moved off the Martin King Boulevard and put on 54th Street now? I don't know, that don't make no sense. And then you took the Goon Bay Grand and stuck it on a park at the end of the street? I don't know, that don't make no sense. Why every, why every hood in Miami that's a hood, the railroad track run through it. I don't know why, it don't make no sense. But let me tell you about my city. My city is the most diverse multicultural city in the United States of America. We got the, we got black Americans. We got Haitians, Jamaicans, Trinidad, Guyanese. We got Asians. We got Cubans, Colombians, Puerto Ricans. We got Dominicans, we got everything. I said Puerto Ricans, God damn it, that's how I said Puerto Rican. And all my Puerto Rican homeboys know that's how I say Puerto Rican. It's the best place in the world. Miami-Dade County, the most beautiful place you ever seen in your life. Well, we got greenery during the winter. My grass just got cut. Well, I got leaves on my trees in February. A city that I died for, and everybody say the Dolphins ain't won nothing since the 80s. I wouldn't give a damn. I'm a Dolphin, Dolphin, Hurricane, Heat, Panther, Marlins fan for life. Anything else is uncivilized. I don't got no second team and all that. While saying this, before I get into details, I'm going to let y'all know one thing. This is my town. This is my city. You investors, if you want to come through and invest, it's cool. As long as we get a part. We can't be bought. We refuse to lose. And welcome to Dade County. I'll be right back. Keep it locked up. I got my box. 
I'm Tamara, and this is another episode of Trick Daddies. I got my pots. The Eminem show went 12 times platinum, meaning it sold 12 million copies, making it the highest selling hip hop album of all time to date. But today we are focused on singles. With that being said, here are the top five highest selling Eminem singles of all time in the United States. Number five, The Monster. It was released on October 28th, 2013, and it went eight times multi-platinum on March 8th, 2022. And the EDM clubs were eating this track up. It was everywhere and in every genre. You heard it on the radio constantly, and we can't forget about Rihanna blessing us on the track with her amazing vocals. Number four, Till I Collapse. It was released on May 26, 2002, and it went eight times multi-platinum March 8, 2022. And he teamed up with an OG on this track. And if you didn't know, M is low-key a motivational speaker, but over a beat. In the song, he talks about his come up and how he is and will always work hard till he collapse. Number three, Not Afraid. It was released on June 5, 2010, and it went 11 times multi-platinum on March 8, 2022. And if you need to have an accountability partner, Eminem sounds like he'd be the best for his fans, friends, and partner. And he showed us in the song that he's not gonna let those weapons formed against him prosper. Number two, Love the Way You Lie, featuring Rihanna. It was released on June 21st, 2011, and it went 13 times multi-platinum on March 8th, 2022. This song talks about domestic violence and the constant struggle between forgiving and finally leaving. It comes off of the same album as the previous song, and it was one of M's most impactful pieces. Number one, Lose Yourself. It was released on September 5th, 2002, and it went 13 times multi-platinum on March 8th, 2022. I think 8 Mile when he was arguing before getting on the stage, and I must say, this song needs to be on your workout playlist. Something about this song gets you hype and ready for anything. And remember, this list is not an opinion. It is based on individual song sales in the United States. Facts courtesy of the RIAA. Either way, I'm Tamara, and this has been another top five on Trick Daddies. I got my pots. I got my pots. Welcome back to I Got My Pots. Yeah, we talking about the culture, the real culture. We talking about the communities where the only time a black band in, in Miami ever had something is when they gave them them little cheap little houses after they left out the war back in the days. And a lot of times when they died, they, they family fought over the house and they fell out over it and they sold the property. Now, now their house, that could have been a, a, the house for the family. Now that house probably is worth 10 times as much as it ever should have been worth now. And they're trying to run us out of our community. We gonna welcome you in, but we ain't going no damn well. I'm telling you right now, I'm making chili because I was talking about the culture of Miami, a place where we got all type of restaurants. We got all type of different foods and different backgrounds when it comes to Miami. I'm just thinking about the, the struggle of the days when, when the Cubans came to Miami, after Castro called himself flushing the toilet on the United States, and the Cubans came to Miami, and we sympathized with the Cuban, we, we accepted them with open arms, and, and then later on down the line, we started realizing, wait a minute, they sending the Haitians back. That's when Duvalier was their president. He was making all the profit off the He thought nobody didn't know what was going on. So they got rid of his ass. And now, a lot of Haitians are proud to be Haitians. And I'm proud of you. I'm proud for you. It's, it's I, I don't have nothing against letting nobody into our country or into our city. But I need my people that's been living here, that's been working here, struggling. They got people that's laid up in cemeteries and morgues. You just got people that's doing time in prison for the crime of surviving. I need them to have the same accolades as the other one. I need them to have the same privileges. Give me, start me off with a 750 credit score. Maybe I could be somebody. Give me a place to stay. Give me some food stamps. Uh, give me some, uh, 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 a hood voucher and, and, a, and a work visa. Maybe I could have something in life. That's all I'm saying. And for everyone, for all of you, Ron DeSantis, uh Chicos, I got a, I, I got a, I got a, I got some bad news for you. If you thought you wasn't one of us, just lay around for it. 
this do something wrong. Say something against what they believe in, and they gonna show you that they was talking to you too. Don't forget where you come from, because all of us from somewhere else. Remember, this Indian country now. Don't get it twisted. And a lot of people say, I want to go back to uh, Africa. Africa is the motherland, but that, I'm not from Africa. I'm from Jackson Memorial Hospital, man. I was raised off WIC, Medicaid, food stamps. My mama was a part of a big project that they had going on. Yeah, a, a, a big bet. A uh, 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 guaranteed failure where they open up housing projects and call it affordable homes, but it also, you know what they was doing to us? They were seeing how successful could a black man be if he was raised by a single black mama. So they gave him housing projects, they gave him welfare food stamp wick, they gave him the welfare cheese and a powder milk, and they, they, they gave him no, no, no chance for education, no opportunities. This was right after segregation. We had just, you gotta understand, the black woman jumped on that because they had just been able to go to school with uh, white people at the time. And they say, uh, well, we got something for you. We gonna give you a place to stay for you and your kids. And don't worry about your rent. It's only gonna be a dollar. Food, oh, yeah, it's it five, six hundred dollar room food stamp. Medical? Oh, here, here goes some Medicaid. Anytime your baby gets sick, you take them down to the, the sorriest clinic in the world where they accept Medicaid. And you give them this Similac milk right here because we're going to control this, we're going to stun this growth. And don't you worry about nothing. But one thing, man, you can't have no husband. If you get married, you're going to have to get out of here. If you get a boyfriend, he can hit you, but he gotta go. He can't stay there. No, we're not offering structure, ma'am. You have to get that from God. And don't worry, if your plumbing go bad, we gonna send a new around workers. Remember the workers were hitting all the women in the project? The new around the whole and they gonna have a way to fix your house according to how fire your mama is so they can keep coming back and don't worry about have to don't worry about feeling left out or feeling small or, or be little over none of your your neighbors all y'all on the same level y'all get the same thing get the same treatment she ain't no better than you I said that to say this, people, y'all black people that got an 800 credit score and you ain't doing shit with it, you wasting my time and your time. I did a lot of suffering for you for nothing. You have to Donald Trump your credit score. Donald Trump ain't got no damn money. He borrowing money from everybody else and making y'all think he rich and saying all this stupid shit to get y'all to kiss his ass. He don't got no money. The man is poor and broke, but he got a good credit score. So y'all got a good credit score just to shine on your home girl or just to brag about it and post it on social media? I know your type. You the type your boyfriend drop you off to work and ride around all day smoking in your car and be late to come pick you up. But then you mad at me and say all black men are the same. Black women, I need you to help. I need the black woman to take control back over to the house. Let the man provide and go get the money. Stop being so confrontational with us and let us be men while y'all be women so we can get back to family living. So we can get back to the morals that and values that we was raised on so we can get back to remembering why we wanted to be out the struggle why we didn't want to be slaves no more why we wanted something in life you get you start you get a little something and forgot what you was really after i go in the club the women dancing on the women they rapping harder than the dudes then you got the passport boys they going out of time to get these these women that don't speak english and marry them y'all wonder what they doing they looking for good credit they looking for structure they ain't spending all that money on lace fronts, BBLs. How you gonna spend twenty thousand dollars to get you a BBL, and you couldn't spend your senior year and got you a GED or a uh, uh, diploma? I'm 
I'm gonna tell you like this. If you ain't do, if you ain't doing it for yourself, help me help somebody else. The little kids are innocent to this. Let's help save them. In order to save a kid, you have to raise a kid. And it's gonna take, then you know what the saying is, I can't do it alone. Everybody do their part, we'll be better off. I need everybody to start off in your own damn house. I want you to get you a broom and a mop, put you some vinegar, some pine saw, some bleach, with a little suds in a bucket. Get all them evil spirits and them dirty ghetto ways up out, clean them right up out your house. Matter of fact, I want you to put Michael Jackson man in mirror on and play it in the background because I want you to look at your damn self. Start with your master bedroom. Go in your kids' room and look under their bed and make sure they ain't got no guns or no drugs in there. And yo, stop telling your daughters that she can't talk to nobody if they ain't gonna do nothing for her because you promoting her to sell her body. That's what I want you to do. And when you do that, you come back to me and you keep it locked right here. And if you ain't subscribed, you make sure you subscribe now because my next guest coming real soon because we got some shit to talk about because these some real brothers and I love them. Keep it locked right here. I got my pots. I got my pots. Yo, welcome back to another episode of I got my pots. If you ain't subscribed, you make sure you subscribe. And you make sure you tell a friend and tell a friend also. And what we doing here, we just keeping it, we just keeping it real. That's all we do here. That's why I brought my next guest here. My next guest are some of my close and personal favorite people in the world and close and personal brothers from another mother. Both of them represent um, black folk all over the world and they represent for us all the time. Always show me love. Always show respect. Y'all give it up for the number one promoters in the whole United States of America. Give it up for Headliner, goddammit. What's going what's up, on? Sir? What's going on? Shane, what's hey, up, man? You already uh, know. Listen, man. I'm telling you, well, we brought y'all here. Straight up. What's that? I've been to a lot of places in the world. And Mike, while you was in school, I was hanging with Shane. That's right. <laughs> getting kicked out of the club, staying in trouble. And the only one who can get me back in the club was Shane. The only one Shane had sense. So I used to stop by the barbershop and then just holler at him, chop it up and, and, and get a little game. But when you came from, y'all first cousins. Right. Yeah. You come from the DMV area. I remember you coming out of the UM, had a problem with the sucker ass um, basketball coach. <laughs> had a problem with the basketball coach because or who you were, yeah. you knew who you were. Look where y'all at now. Live I on like Sunday, that. that's the that's the most popular saying in the culture. Uh-huh. You talk, listen, you go from, you go from a basketball player, basketball's high school star, uh-huh. college star, Shane go from a top barber in the down south area to selling the house of wings they do. He was <laughs> you were cutting hair and selling wings at the same time. You right. And now y'all the number one promoters in the world and the number one nightclub in the world, I believe. Also, and y'all done did many, 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 many parties. One of y'all compadres ain't here today. Yeah. We'll we'll shot him out later, but we right now, what I wanna do is I hate when people talk about, you remember such and such, 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 such? Oh, he was the real one. We ain't waiting for that. Before we get into that, before I let y'all say anything, what y'all, and y'all can say anything you want to say over here. <laughs> Me, CO, my man EJ, mm-hmm. we want to do, right here on I got my part, we want to give headliners the flowers right now. I'm gonna give you your flowers right now. Why you alive? Why you he- Why you healthy? I'm gonna give you your flowers right now. Y'all, come on, man. Come on, give me. We're gonna give y'all flowers right now. Appreciate that. Okay, that's right. Okay, okay. Black roses. Black roses. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, ladies. Yeah. We wanna give y'all y'all flowers now. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Man, I appreciate everything. Y'all have always shown me love. Y'all accepted me 
for who I was. That's right. When, I, when, when y'all started doing my party over 10 years ago at Lil, I was like, Mike called me like, we gonna do your birthday. I was like, me? At Lil? Mm -hmm. I can't even get any goddamn Fat Tuesday. <laughs> y'all been doing a party at Lil? Oh, hell yeah. And just so happened, my birthday month, Scotty Pippen, Lil, Lil Wayne, T.I., Jeezy, uh, Nick Cannon. Mm -hmm. All our birthdays is, is two, three days apart. Right. And y'all showed me love, man. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate everybody over there at Club Live. And not only do headliners do parties at Club Live, they do parties everywhere. Whenever you see that name, headliners, just know it's gonna be classy. Y'all the first one started the band was coming out with the signs in the bottom and making them. <laughs> and I, I remember um, you had let me met the, met the owner of the club and I was talking to him. This one y'all was finna close down. Mm, hey. He said I'm finna close down for a couple of months. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, I, I gotta add on. I said, wait, you finna close down, stop making money to spend money? He said, oh yeah. yeah. He said, people, like to feel important. Yeah. They want to have a good time mm -hmm. and they're willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. He said, we're going to sell it to them. <laughs> Whatever you want, you holler at Shane and Mike. I said, all right, no problem. <laughs> and one birthday party, you bought me about 50 bottles out. I was like, hey, hey, how much is this? He's like, no, 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 I got you, I got you. I said, man, you can take some back. He said, no, I tell you what, whenever you don't want to, whenever y'all don't drink, right. we'll take it back. And I, that was the man, I appreciate you, man. Okay, I, I appreciate you, I appreciate you, man. Y'all showed me more love than anybody. The documentary. Yeah. How how did you like it at the end? I love it. Nah, it's it's, a, it's amazing. You, matter of fact, I ain't gonna say between y'all two, y'all yeah. sold the show. Cause y'all, y'all, y'all gave me what we wanted. Because everybody, see, every, you so professional, everybody think that they got to be pretty when they talk about you. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody That's think you got to be pretty when they talk nah, about you. you. you, you Nobody never see you raise your voice. When the gangster shit come down, you going to see Shane walk up and, and, with his pose. <laughs> <laughs> you going to see Shane walk up with him. But you don't get it. Uh, so, me and Sh you, you know me and Shane know you better. Yeah, I know. I know. And, and thanks to Nikki. Shout out to my sister, y'all <laughs> sister and cousin. Shout out to Nikki. Nikki always have let me know what kind of people y'all were, what y'all like, what y'all didn't like from years ago, from the days when I was with when, when I was with Luke. And Nikki still, Nikki is the one that rode with Luke the longest. And she still there, she still got his back. She always did her own thing, but she's been there for it. And I appreciate that too. But mm -hmm. what besides what me and Shane say, what other parts of the, of, the, of the whole documentary that made you say, cause I watched my aunt's song, mm -hmm. I was watching it with some homeboys, mm -hmm. and then I was about to cry. So I was like, I gotta go right quick. And I went home and I watched it cause I couldn't watch it with nobody. Mm -hmm. Cause there was a lot of stuff that I had forgot. Right, yeah. right. So what, what, what part like touched you the most? Nah, the part the, the part for me was just just stamping Miami, cause that's a, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing the documentary. Right. Not just to, a, about the parties and about the clubs and all that, but it's just to put some light on Miami to let them know what we have done here in Miami and kind of like you know everybody know about Live on Sunday and all that, but they don't know really who's behind it. Like everybody in the industry, them that I don't gave money to host parties, they know who is behind it, but I'm talking about the world. The, the world, people, the world. They people. thinking it's just live. They thinking it that, oh, it's no, somebody else. No, no that's no. us, man. Live is a night, the one that, live is the best club in the world. They got other nights, but they're night, they're not live on, on Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> they're not live on Sunday. And, 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 and shout out to Drake. Mm -hmm. Drake often reference live on Sunday in his music. Yeah. Lil Wayne Lil reference Wayne. it. And every, and, and which everybody should, but y'all had top notch artists in there. Right. Y'all got, y'all got artists in there. I never thought I would ever met. I probably wouldn't have met, cause it'd be you know be some scary. <laughs> they be like, like, you see me? I got the monkey suit on. I got the bubble head cloth. It'd be scary. <laughs> like, be like, oh man, that trick. Now he hang with them thugs. But y'all done had it went from Usher to Drake, Wayne, Snoop, Jay Z, Janet Jackson, Janet Jackson, Rihanna. Rihanna. Justin Timberlake. Right. How you get them people in there? 
Hey, it's live on Sunday. Let's live on Sunday, man. It's, Number it's, one it's party in the world, y'all. That's it. And then round around 2:30, <laughs> they play that video. <laughs> that's my favorite. That's my favorite part. I be wanting to say, hey, play the video. <laughs> you see Dr. Dre walking there and the bitch like, do do do. You see Dre, then you see Jigga. I'm like, boy, they had some stars in there. And then y'all y'all make it snow in that. You make it rain, confetti, anything you want. If you ever if you ever been to live on Sunday, y'all need to get there. I'm telling you, amazing. I, but look, look, I want to ask you though, since I know this is your show, but I want to ask you, what, uh -huh. when I ask you to come be a part of live, I know that ain't your thing. Like you said, you know that's that, as you say, that's that that's that bougie shit. That's that's that ain't Miami. Right. I seen a documentary you did my, myself. Right. Man, they had me as the as the face of and you was like nah them ain't from miami them ain't some real miami i know you weren't necessarily talking about no me, right right but when right. i reached out to you right what was your thought when you was like damn this had me host live because okay birthday. okay because okay so 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 listen so my thing was y'all started with a with a small party mm -hmm. and then live became the first time i tried to come to live right i tried to come I, I went next door to park and the man was like 500. I was like, oh shit, no, <laughs> this ain't f Maybe I'm not supposed to be here. Right, right, right. Right, and so when my father went in, I was like, I told him, man, hey, get Michael Shane. And when I walked up, they was like, y'all was like, okay, who you with? Okay, come on in. Right. So I told all my homeboys, I was like, I ain't never seen no from the street mm -hmm. control nothing with so much professionalism in class, like these, mm -hmm. I, where y'all learn that in the, in the mosque? Where y'all learn this at? <laughs> you, you know that's you know that's for our training. Yeah, you know that's for our training. I mean, cause like, like what? Because I know these dudes is these is real dudes that's been around street dudes all their life. Got street in their family, right. but it takes a lot for a black man to be in an establishment like that and be so well respected and so professional. I ain't know how to come up and say, boy, I ain't want to keep saying, boy, bet that up, boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't want to keep saying, boy, bet that up, boy. Nah. Cause, and then, then you was like, I want to do your party. I'm like, man, that's bullshit, man. I ain't do my party. Now that don't live. <laughs> so I'm going to tell, tell you what, I fell out with niggas. Cause it's certain, I'm not breaking them. Right, right. <laughs> now I don't want you to come down and be, and be, and be late and come to the door. I'm with Trick. No, you're not with me. Man, and y'all just, I, 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 don't, I don't know, man. I see, I get in there and I see the girls in, in all the corners dancing. I was like, oh shit. And then I walk around to the side and I see other real n there. Right. And I look and I see all the app, the whole baseball. I see soccer teams in there. And I see uh, football teams in there and everybody in their own section. I was like, boy, this it. I was like, this is it. I'm gonna, tell you, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Live on Sunday is so big. I try not to go so much. Mm. I don't want to forget that I got to go back over here across this bridge. <laughs> because the Live on Sunday is the place, if you want this, you got to have this experience in your life. If you don't do nothing else. Matter of fact, I'm gonna say this. If you haven't been to Live on Sunday, you've never been out to a club. This is a club, this is, I done been to clubs in Vegas. I done been to clubs in LA, in, in, in Washington State. I done been to clubs in, I used to go to, um, what the name of the club in DC? The, um, love. What, what, what was, was it? Love? Nah. It was something, love, love, is that it? That was, uh, they changed Whatever, the name love, to. Home. It, was a, it was a couple of them. Yeah. You talking but about the one all... that was, I'm talking about warehouse, warehouse, yeah, warehouse, yeah, warehouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I thought that was amazing. When I walked in Live, I went to the bathroom. It was so clean and professional. <laughs> I tipped the bathroom man before I used the bathroom. <laughs> and he ain't had no Drake car. He ain't had no taxi. This man had Issy Miyagi. Right, right, he had, right. He had Million. He had uh, Dior. He had the real Dior colognes in there. Man, I just, I was just, I just appreciated, man, that I could be still considered as family. Like I can go, you know, you know. Everybody's a kid to you ain't family. Right, right. And how I deal with my family is that shit starter, 
promiscuous, mm -hmm. the thief, the liar. I don't invite them no more. Mm -hmm. I don't invite them no more. That way we can still at least be some kin. Right. Because what I consider us not being family. But when I, when I realized I could be family with Mike and Shane on the beach at Lil. Isn't that a turnaround? Isn't that a turnaround? What? At the bottom came to the top? Man, listen, man. Yeah. Man, I, but the first time I went there, I was just normal. Every, every, every other time I went in there, <laughs> I definitely got broke, but I'm, I'm gonna put that shit on, boy. <laughs> you guys, you gonna really they put that shit on, and then they say, um, uh, well, you gonna perform. I'm like, what? And yeah. live? Yeah, you get on that stage. I said, we gonna perform and live? I was like, oh, hell yeah. And, and um, I think the first, the, my first party was there. Uh, Flo Rider was um, hosting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This sent me a $3,500 bar. I said, nah, nah, what the I'm supposed to do when his birthday come? Right, 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 right. <laughs> like, I got nine. <laughs> Four of my this bar I ain't gonna be able to send him no thirty five hundred dollar bar. Shout out to Flo Ride from eighty two million he hit for. Yeah, that's right. that's Just right. let you know that. So Shane, but, I, yes. and, and you 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 been in the restaurant business longer than me. The hardest part of the business, I know. Let the people know the hardest part of opening a restaurant. The hardest part? Yeah. <sighs> Shit, I don't know. Trick. The hardest part would be getting employees. That's it. That's the biggest thing. <laughs> Nobody wants to work. Everybody wants to win. They and, wants. And, and, and they and they they gimme gimme now. Yeah, yeah. They gonna say, "Well, you can, boy, boy, you doing good, but you got yeah. a restaurant." Yeah. Certain dudes see you yeah. big money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they don't want to work. <laughs> no. Hey, they don't see you cleaning the fryer. They don't see you cleaning the floor. They no. don't see you cleaning the pots. No. But they want to eat good. They ain't see you go down there to City Hall and, and had to pass all these inspections exactly. and pay exactly. all this money. Exactly. They but they want see that. They don't see that. I bet he in House of Wings since 97, 98, 99. And, you and, always, you always support him from day one. And, 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 and that's what I do. Let me tell you something. Black folks, we have to start supporting us. We got to start supporting each other. Now, if uh, y'all know me, I don't kiss ass. I'm for the eat a game. That's right. I, I don't kiss ass and definitely not me and ass, okay? <laughs> Anybody know me, if I don't like you, I don't speak to you, I don't talk to you, but I don't say nothing bad about you. If you don't like his restaurant or my restaurant or the way Mike is performing and you don't like it, avoid us. Don't be right here talking bad about somebody, man. Right. You hating on black people. We got enough black people that practice bad business practices already. Right. That you wanna say support black businesses, no. Support all good black businesses. And, and people, like I teach my employees, the customer is right. That's right, that's right. The customer is always right. As long as they ain't disrespectful. As long as, and, and, and we had a situation like that the other day. As long as they ain't disrespectful. We had a situation the other day and I heard that one of my GM had it. The lady went in the bathroom and didn't lock the door. Uh-huh. So nobody went in on her, but they like grabbed the door like, and she like, Cussing loud, and the rest right. of the customers here. Right. So they like shut it, man. So twenty minutes later, she's still in there. I don't know what her stomach muscle was hurting. Mm -hmm. She still was in there. She ain't ordered no food from the restaurant. First thing she did was went to the bathroom, uh -huh. and she been in there with the door unlocked. <laughs> now any decent woman would go in the bathroom unlock and the lock the door first. The second person came in and, and just touched the knob, and you could hear her in the lobby. My GM stood by the door and waited for her to come out. Uh -huh. And he got black on her. That's right. And he got black on her, That's he right. let her know. And when she walked out the door, all the customers applauded. Because one thing about black people, we done did, we done did, we didn't embarrass each other so much. We like to see people win. Like when I'm in the casino, I don't want no walking up to me. Don't win all the money, but you don't need right. no money. Yes, the I do. I know. That's right. What you mean I don't need no money? Why you think I'm in here? Exactly, exactly. I need this money. And, 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 and one thing about y'all business, I know y'all gonna have y'all business right. I know y'all gonna keep it right and be professional. And I know I got to be professional because if nobody don't tell me, y'all gonna tell me before. You know I will. Y'all like, you don't have no, no problem. You know, me, and Corey, me and Corey had a conversation. Uh, he said, listen, man, he want, 
I want you to tell some stories. I got one story that I do want to say. All right. It, it brings it all the way back to how you how you big enough live and right. you know it's 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 this it's that. It was it was back at Teasers. Damn. Fifth yep. Ocean. Yep. Yeah. Lee, you yeah. came up into the party. You know I'm I'm coming up, and and I'm trying to set the tone of what it is that I want to do right. with this party shit. You came up with a bunch of and all y'all had on shorts. I said, Trick, you can't come in here with the shorts. You said, you worried about these shorts. You need to be worried about this 357 I got in my pocket. I was like, this nigga crazy. I said, man, this nigga gonna kill me on my party. They just gonna put on some pants and come on back. Next thing you know, you came back. And you start coming, but you 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 really wasn't with it. Cause I was like, man, maybe this just can't put on no pants. But you slowly but surely I had, came around. I, I, and my, now- I can say this, I had life up. Back then? You, in order to, you gotta recognize where you f up at in order to get a be a better person, man. Right, right, we right, born right, in right. an imperfect world as an imperfect human being. Mm -hmm. I had life f up. That's why it was hard for me to convince anybody that I could rap. Right. Even with, with Luke, I had to rap against Red Eyes for an hour and a half. I was like, man, I'm about to, man, f this shit. I got a half ounce in the car, man. I'm missing my money. And that's this thing rapping, and I know this thing can't beat me rapping. And I'm like, and every time I think he can't beat me rapping, this thing got another song. I'm like, man, what the hell did you get all this shit from, right? And I rap, did I finally? So as I started being around Luke, Luke would call me every morning, where you at? Come through. Mm -hmm. Luke ain't know at the time, I was homeless. Right, right. I was paying a kid to sell drugs at his house. I was paying him and his old lady. I, I get her $50 a day, get him $50 a day. They say, go to your girl house. Mm -hmm. Wow. And even when after after me and Luke never got a deal, when I went to Ted, I was like, man, I want to rap. He was like, you, you, you bring that big gun everywhere and you pull it out and you, you sit it on the, I had the 44, the, 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 uh, the dirty hair. You bring that big gun everywhere and you sit it right there on the table. Man, you're going to, you're going to prison. I say, man, I ain't going to no prison. Right. And my daughter was born Halloween 95. I was like, boy, I gotta do something now. I gotta do something now. The dope game is changing. The whole culture is changing. I gotta do something now. And it, 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 it took for me, it, it took so long for me to realize I know what did it. And me and him cool now, and I love him. I always love him. Me and one of my friends got in an argument on Richmond Park, remember? Mm -hmm. I had the incident. Mm -hmm. He pressed charges on me, sent me to jail, and sued me. Yeah. Mm. Somebody who I looked at as my brother. I still look at him as my brother right now today because I'm a man. Yeah. He sued me. And, and, and when I came out, the, I, I, I've been doing Treat Little Kids for 21 years now. Mm -hmm. Never had the news there one time. Done took family, done do, donated money, done did all type of stuff for the community. Not one time that they brought it up. I came out the courtroom and a paparazzi was there. I'm like, I'm like, I wonder who else getting out of jail. Mm -hmm. All they got there, paparazzi. Right. And they ran up to me, trick daddy, trick daddy. I'm like, man. When I went home, I sat on the bed. I was like, boy, I'm famous. You know you, you know you're famous when years later somebody make up a story, right? <laughs> I love this brother too, you know, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm not gonna bite my tongue. Fat Joe said he got me my career, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Shout out to Joey Crack for my career. Like, oh, where were you when I had the 44 Madden, the 357 snub nose? Cause that's when my career started, so I don't know. He said he took it to Atlanta Records. I've been signed to Atlanta Records since 1996. Wow. Mm -hmm. 97. Right. I don't know, but I did, I, 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 man, I thank all my fans for my support. I thank all the prosecutors and the judges that gave me chance and chance again. <laughs> Everybody that was willing to let me bond out of jail because the last, well, one time I bond out and didn't go and, and they had to find me. Thank you for every, everything, man. I appreciate it, man. Shout out to man, shout out to y'all. I got this chili on, I made this chili a little spicy. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I put- I saw some meat, what kind of meat you put in there? No pork. All right, we good, man. You ain't got to worry about it. <laughs> okay. I, I, ain't no way I bring no swine around y'all. No pork. I got beef and beef sausage. Mm -hmm. And I got some rice. Cause I know y'all still got that geechee in it. 
tell you and you and Shane was gonna do a a, a wing off. Whenever, whenever, I'm, 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 listen, listen, I look at I look at Shane as my big brother, but I'm gonna tell you right now, he, he better not run up on me on no type of off. With no when wings? It, hell no. <laughs> Say you got one little one little special little season I like. You got one little wing special I like. Say I got some shit now. I'm gonna tell you like this. <laughs> It'll take you two months to match one. So that means I got 60 days and 60 over just 60 flavors of wings now at three. You can Google me and I never ran. No, we, I we never, have, we I gonna never... have a five flavor minimum. You ain't gonna be able to bring no 60 flavors. You pick your best five. <laughs> We gonna do. We gonna. We gonna pick. You gonna pick your best five. Let's go, let's go. That's a good one. I like that. that. That's what we need to do. We need to set it up. That's right. At the urban at one of these place and have a real cook-off. Damn, cook I like that. Have a cook-off. Damn, I like that. All the restaurants. Maybe we can do that during the festival. But a friendly cook-off. But remember this: a friendly, a friendly, friendly cook-off. This is with. This is nothing but merely bragging rights amongst right. Miami dudes right. because it's Miami versus everybody else. That's right. Y'all done stole our sound. Y'all done stole everything else. They came down here, tried to steal our women. Now you trying to steal our land and our property. And the two, they say, you're not, they say you don't eligible for a pro, uh, the, um, the moving apartment unless you make it three times the rent. That's right. The yeah. average rent is 3,500. Who makes that much yeah. money? Yeah, right. Three times the rent. Mm. Who makes that much money? $2,000, you living next door to somebody who sell Molly. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, only fan model. <laughs> like, it, it's rough out here, man. And and y'all think we did all that? God brought us all, all brought, brought us this far to drop us off right here? No, we gonna keep going, man. Got us some fluffy rice here. You see how, you see how that rice standing up? That's how them wings gonna be standing up. I see up. that. I see that. So we cook off. If we go, we want to involve whoever else wants some. Yeah, anybody. We'll do a, like we'll do a size competition, chicken size competition. I'm gonna set it up. The people on the grill who, who think they got the best ribs, cook off. I ain't no questions. I got, I got one question, Mike, for you. What's up? So in VA, right? Uh huh. Did y'all put sugar in y'all grits? Yep. Sugar don't go on no grits, yes, Mike. That's Mike, like, sugar that's, don't go on like grits, Jay. Sugar, sugar, sugar go on No, it don't. Sugar, sugar go on sugar, oatmeal sugar, and cream of wheat, bro. Oatmeal, cream of wheat, grits, and rice. And rice. Oh, my God. <laughs> I eat my rice with sugar. <laughs> sugar depending oh on what, my I, what God. else I'm eating it with. Or yes. I put some gravy on it. So that's how I get just in there. I put some sugar in that grit. <laughs> Trick, you got some um, sugar in your chili? It, it no, I ain't got no sugar in my chili. <laughs> yeah, that's part of it. Sugar going Kool-Aid, <laughs> oatmeal, and plain cornflakes. Damn. And plain cornflakes. So what's next for headliners? Like, I know it's more than just live. It's I more than just, yeah, it's more than just the parties, man. We trying to expand into ownership. So that's coming soon. Like I've been, uh, you know, trying to get my own spot for quite some time now, but I got, I got caught in that rut of, getting this money at live and but now it's, it's it's about that time to get our own spot and keep keep expanding Miami. Oh that's what's up. Yeah because we don't have if we go back for uh, for us being so influential to the culture period, I remember we was going Memorial Weekend, mm -hmm. I remember us going to Cancun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When they met Miami in Cancun, they say, where's these from. We got, they've been coming here ever since. Yeah. yeah. We went to Cancun three years mm -hmm. and they followed us home. Mm. So ain't no way they gonna enjoy our town. They ain't gonna enjoy our skyline. Enjoy the stuff that we got to suffer and go through. They gonna enjoy it more than us. No way possible. What's the biggest challenge of being a promoter in Miami? The biggest challenge? right now is just trying to maintain being a promoter against a club owner like a lot of club owners now they they know what the format is they know what the formula is so it's sometimes it's hard to to maintain that as a promoter that's why i said me expanding into ownership is going is my next phase and I think they coming they, up, they, coming up. They think they can learn it from you, and they can do it. And then they can do it. And then after a while, it fall off. 
That's why nothing don't stay open no more. Everybody got to get in their own lane and stay in your lane, man. Avoid all, avoid and obey all traffic laws and signs. <laughs> That right. bitch say slow down, yield, uh, uh, 30 miles around this curb. Don't go around there doing 70. Right. Mm -hmm. Let the doctors be doctors, let the lawyers be lawyers. Look right. See, That's you right. you can't eat this. Nah, I want some rice, though. See, hold on, man. Check this out. I understand that they, they're Muslim and they don't eat <laughs> pork, but. If you gonna eat some of my rice, you won't eat some of this chili today. Man, I can't eat, yeah, can, not today. Maybe tomorrow. You ain't getting no rice, see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. Hey, but we gotta at least See, pray. you gonna eat rice by itself, see? Yeah. Come on, man. So now that y'all are some Muslim brothers, we usually pray over food. Y'all got to say the prayer. And, and, I and, hear. and, and uh, Arabic. Damn, <laughs> all right. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim Alhamdulillah ar rahman ar rahim Amen. 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 Ashalaam alaykum. Amen. First time. Wow. Yeah. Hey, you messed your head up, huh? I got the water over here. Yes. I'm looking for some hot sauce. <laughs> wow. Because, you know, y'all know we got y'all black roses. I see that. Black roses, man. We, we represent the... The real culture, yeah, man. Deep. Let me see what this what this tastes like first. Yeah, we ready? We Let me see what it yeah. is. Y'all see what yeah. this tastes yeah. like. Man, we appreciate y'all coming, man. Nah, I know man, this shit's like. Man, I, I, we appreciate y'all for everything. We don't have no more God of the Dead Dewberry between y'all and Dewberry. Y'all was we got space. Promoter. We got space. Then we got um. Hmm. We got deep pocket, but he full of shit. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Uh, and one more well, question. Okay. What up? What was like one of the biggest art, the best artists you had on your shows? One of the best artists I had on my show? Yeah. I can't answer that. You got the top artists, bro. Exactly. What's wrong with you? I can't that, answer that, that. That's, that's like a trick. Well, that's like a. That's, that was a, definitely a trick question. That's on Carisha for to ask somebody. Hey, but let me tell you something. The funny story is, right? You know, Mark, Mike started out with Club Onyx as an intern. Lies. Tell the truth. That's a lie. How with did Donovan? it start? That's with Donovan? I met no. you there, but I ain't started there. Oh, you, you didn't, didn't start no, no, there? Hell no. Then no, he didn't start there. there. That begins a little started. bit of the story. Like, I ain't tell the truth. There. Tell the story. Mm -mm. I ain't got no story. No, now. that's not true, that's, boy. That's, How did it go? That's definitely not true. How did it go? <laughs> well, my first party, right? I did a player's ball. Mm -hmm. Coming from a, you know, I was, I came back down here from Chicago, right? And I was living in the back of his barbershop, and he was like, "Man, you ain't doing nothing." Like I still wanted to play ball. I still had these <laughs> hoop dreams. I was going to the NBA, so I was staying in the back of his barbershop. And he was like, "Man, you know all these play ball and." doing this, why don't, you, uh, why don't you do a player's ball? But I thought he was talking about like with the athletes and shit Play like that. Ball, that but nah, good. he was like, nah, man, I'm talking about with some real you know? Yeah. <laughs> he said, they'd love to come to Miami. It's, you know, you know, you, you know a few people in Chicago, don't you? So I started putting together the player's ball. I ain't had nothing to lose, man. And then you remember uh, Danielle Ferguson, mm -hmm. the running mm -hmm. back from UM? D Ferg. D Ferg, D Ferg had made, had made it to the league. And he gave me like $60,000 to do my first party. Man, I lost all that man money. Did you give it back yet? Because I know well, you I make about 100000 every man. night. That's cold blooded. You <laughs> say that on in the world. Like, be first, listen, wherever you at, Shame. if I ever see you again, I'm indebted to you, brother. And I got your money now. At least oh. the money I owe you for interest. That's about 22 years worth of interest. Nah, see, I ain't say all that. Well, <laughs> goddamn it, you started it. Uh -huh. <laughs> since we, since, since we, we, you said we keep it real, right? Mm -hmm. So, goddamn it, Trick called me last night. Man, I want, I want you to come on my show. Whatever he want me to do, I'ma do it. Cause every time I've called him to ask him to do something, he done it. But CEO, he, I'm, I'm assuming he's executive producer of this show. Mm -hmm. this 
gave me no questions, nothing. He just said, just come and talk. Like, and he know I don't talk. Right. <laughs> he better need, he need to have some to ask me so we can keep the, the, the uh, energy going. Yeah, and will. now he want to interview. He want to interrupt the interview. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. But that's how we do it. We just do it. What what we don't do is we don't assassinate nobody character. Right. Definitely. We not talking about nothing. Man, you got a whole lot you can talk about. You would did. Why don't you ask about how I I always call you and try to book certain artists or something like that, and you give me the bullshit. No. Oh. So see you, bro. <laughs> Sometimes. Come on, Mike. No, I'm gonna <laughs> <Dang. laughs> tell them some of the artists I help you with. Nah, I'm gonna do that. I though. can tell you something bigger than that. <laughs> and nobody can say this. Mike done booked me 20 times. <laughs> Woo. We never discussed the price. Never. He gave me a bag, I never complained, I never mm. had to. Mm. Real mm. shit to mm. all y'all drinking mm. promoters. We never discussed Ooh. the price. That's the only one I never, never, ever, a deposit was never, ever given. Mm, Damn. Say that again. Don't. Never give it. How you like and that? I never got to, if, if I leave before I get the money, he gonna say, I'll call you, he gonna text me. Where you at? I got your money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last time I had to meet you somewhere like two, three days later. Matter of fact, I gave it to Shaq. And yeah, Shaq you right. And brought it to you. And filmed it while he was bringing him the money. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's what real do. Damn. Yeah. Man, I appreciate y'all for coming to the show. Mm -hmm. I know y'all got some promotion to do. I got my pops. Yeah, tell everybody what's going on, like your social media, what's next. Social media, it's that headline world. Right now, matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm a, this is gonna be a long stretch for this one though, but I'm what? gonna try it on, on your show. Mm -hmm. You know about Live On Sunday, you know about Story, you know about Memorial Day weekend and all that right. shit. But look, I, I, I'm starting this new shit that I've been doing for about a year. It's called doo -wop. It's all R&B. Like you won't hear now one hip hop song. That, that's you know, as you growing up, you, you can you can you can jump into this other lane and come. You know, what what those are? You say? Bubblehead, bubblehead, bubblehead. Bubble the bubblehead can do two steps, right? <laughs> come to the doo wop. That's what we're doing next. We're doing the doo wop. We're gonna expand that brand. That's an all R&B thing. I took it on the road. I'm doing it in Chicago. Vegas, Atlanta, DC. Man, I'm not. All I got to do is let me know, man. I'm, you know that. That's Just love. tell me. Okay. But hold on. Yeah. But but trick, I got one even bigger. I want to announce this because you said something. You've been talking real heavy about Dade County. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, well, it's a group of us that we're about to build. Probably the first black only resort, three or 400 rooms in Miami, with a museum. That's you. I don't know if he was supposed to say that though. I ain't supposed to say it, but Trick gonna say it. He wasn't supposed to say that. That's you, that. so I'm gonna let y'all know. So he didn't say it, so I say it. Y'all you know? be that. careful and look out for it. It's I got some young black <laughs> entrepreneurs that's gonna build this big old chocolate museum. For all black folks, it is going to be very, very plush I mean, and nice. Than that. Let me if they my... got something to do with it, you want to experience that. Yes, mm. sir. Remember, if you ain't subscribed, subscribe right now. Hit that subscription button. Bye. Follow all us all over social media. You're going to see the names, the tags at the bottom. And remember, I got my pots. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Y'all know what it is. This is the part of the show where we do what we do. I got some artists from right here, 954. So it's the 3 0 to the 954. Fort Lauderdale. And he go by the name of Arlen. What's up, man? What's going on, CEO? What you gonna do today, man? Man, we finna rock out, man. I got my lovely dancers, man. Okay. Man, have a good time, bro. Man, you gonna represent South Florida? 954, man. Bro, we in this bitch, man. We finna have a good time. 305. Let me see what you it. got. Yeah.
She said she wanna fun. Boy Arlen, god damn you tall. <laughs> Should have played basketball or something, man. Let everybody know where they can find you at. You can find me at everything Arlen on all platforms, all streaming, all social media, man. Shout out Trick Daddy, shout out CEO. Shout out my pops, man. You already know what's up. Man. And one thing y'all probably don't know, man, this is a hell of a songwriter. Yeah. So if you need a song written, y'all know who to hit up. So y'all can hit me up too, but you know. <laughs> I got my pots. Yo. I got my pots.